Hey guys, this is Plutonium here and welcome back to another Minecraft video. And in today's video, you can actually already see behind me what we are actually going to do. This is actually another Minecraft tutorial, but it's not like any redstone tutorial. It's it's basically a farm tutorial and uh, it's only my second farm tutorial that I've ever done since the last bee farm tutorial, which was only my third video on this channel. And it's like my 38th video now. <laughs> and uh, yeah, <laughs> we are only making our second farm as a tutorial and anyways let's talk about this farm today and the farm that we're going to build is well you can already tell by that creature which is just wandering in there we are going to make a simple a very simple very efficient hoglin farm and uh, yeah it, it's it's okay let's just leave that hoglin let's talk about this farm you can see that why is it really simple is because it is so small it requires so many it requires so less resources i mean it's just simply a spawn platform with a killing chamber underneath and there's the drops it's it's very small but still it's quite efficient i mean talking about the rates it it gives about like 1400 pork chops every hour and about 210 uh leather every hour so i guess this is really really efficient and this is like only about 20 minutes of AFKing and that's all I got. Like seven sta six stacks and then one stack of leather, which is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> anyway, so how you need to actually make this farm work is simply first need to be inside of a crimson forest biome because hoglins only and only spawn inside of crimson forest biomes. I mean, they do spawn inside of bastion remnants, but they are a structure and this is a biome and it can also extend above the bedrock ceiling. Yeah, so you also need to build this thing off the bedrock ceiling, which means that in survival you need to actually break bedrock. And uh, it's actually a, an entire procedure in itself. So I'm not going to actually show you a tutorial right now of how to break bedrock. There's lots of videos probably out there on YouTube. And I can definitely link you to one. And the link for it will be down in the description. You can just go check it out and just know yourself how to break bedrock. It's, it's a tough job. Let me tell you, it's a really tough job. I have been playing a bit of survival and it just took me a long time <laughs> to just be able to master that, the bedrock breaking procedure. <laughs> anyway, after you have broken bedrock, you should build this thing above the bedrock ceiling. Why? Because obviously you have a lot of space. I mean, an unlimited amount of space. <laughs> and uh, And also nothing spawns up here. That's also very good. Now, you actually also need to go up a little bit higher because obviously there's this thing called a spawn radius or actually a despawn radius rather which is about 128 blocks now why do you actually need to take this in mind is because since we constructed this thing here near the bedrock ceiling if we stand right here we can actually cause spawns inside of this spawn platform and also in the nether below and uh, to avoid the nether spawns that are happening below and only allow spawns up here what you should actually do is you should afk like really high up in the air up to like y230 and i am slowly going to get to that height while i'm slowly raising myself up so since you will be at such a height and there you go we have already reached so when you'll be at a height most of the nether spawning is just outside of your despawn radius so only the hoglins will spawn inside of this hoglin farm as well and you need also keep in mind about lighting in this spawn platform because obviously hoglins and piglins also spawn inside of the crimson forest biomes and you need to also take care that this place is pretty much lit up because piglins can actually spawn at a light level of 11 or lower inside of java edition and uh, yeah <laughs> you you would not want to have any kind of piglin spawns because that might alter the efficiency as they might take up the mob cap and you would not want that you might want maximum efficiency so you need to always light up this place thoroughly before you can do anything and also this farm is pretty versatile because you can always add more and more spawn platforms you can also create adjacent farms i mean it's not really required considering the rate is like 1400 poke shops per hour and the, that, those noises will be there you don't need to worry it's just that th there's a little flaw in this and that is that the baby hoglins they actually get trapped inside here and they don't actually get burnt by the lava like i mean not all of them get completely burnt due to the lava but it's just that a few of them remain but you don't need to worry since you'll be afk up there they will probably despawn and then everything's good <laughs> anyway so enough talking about this farm we need to also talk about how this farm actually 
works on what kind of game mechanic it also works and uh, this actually works on warped fungi yes so the game mechanic actually is that hoglins are scared of warped fungi because they live in a crimson forest and this is a warped stuff and you know the counterparts and all of those things you know about the nether biomes and they are actually scared of these warped fungi so when you place a warped fungus anywhere near to a hoglin it will just it will just it'll just you know run away from it and what i have done is I actually have placed warped fungi all around this platform and what will happen is that all of these hoglins will rush towards the center and they will fall into this killing chamber where they will all die obviously the adult hoglins are the only ones that will die and they are the only ones that actually give us the drops and the baby hoglins are pretty much useless so we don't need to worry about any baby hoglins then okay <laughs> that's all about talking about this farm I guess we should move on to the tutorial. Let's let's start building it. So to build this farm, you're actually going to need a 16 by 16 area, which doesn't seem to be tiny, right? Even though I might have said that this is a tiny farm, this still takes a 16 by 16 area. So you can actually build it inside of one chunk completely. And that actually is quite lag efficient as well then. Anyway, after that, uh, you need to also make sure that this entire area is within a... Crimson forest biome because obviously you want only and only hoglins to spawn. Let's say a little bit of this just goes into say a soul sand valley. You definitely not want that because then there would be skeletons spawning. There could also be ghasts spawning. And that is definitely a very dangerous thing to have. You should always take your, make sure that this farm is entirely within a crimson forest biome. Now how you're going to check this is you can actually stand at any one of the four corners. And then you can turn on your F3 screen. So on the left... You can see that there's this thing called the biome, which is being shown as the crimson forest, as it should be. Now what you need to do is you need to stand at one corner, then you need to go to the opposite side, the opposite corner, and keep looking at the biome as it should remain a crimson forest. And go to the other set of corners, do the same for the other set of corners, make sure everything is in the crimson forest, and once it is like that, you are assured that this farm is completely within a crimson forest and you are good to go. Anyway, so... If you want to build this, here's what you need. So there's two lists and uh, the two lists are for the different, you know, sections of this farm for the spawn platform and for our kill chamber. So we have two chests here. So for our kill chamber, we are going to need 14 bits of your building blocks. I'm going to use netherrack, but you can use any block. I'm going to use uh, glass here as well. So two bits of glass. This is for, you know, I'm going to tell you that later. Then you need four hoppers, two chests. For signs, now these could be of any wood type, but I'm going to use nether because they don't catch fire and that's what you need to take care of. And you also need the lava bucket for the kill chamber. So, after that you're going to need all of this stuff for the spawn platforms. Now you can build more than one spawn platform, so this is just the list for one of them. You need to multiply this by the number of spawn platforms that you need. So, and that is how many, and that is how much stuff you would need for that. So, for one spawn platform, you're going to need 240 bits of your building blocks or I'm going to use netherrack because it's my choice. <laughs> so 240 building blocks. You're going to need four trapdoors again made of the nether wood type because this thing is going to go on top of the lava and you don't want it to catch fire, right? <laughs> so what is the use of these trapdoors is basically the pathfinding AI of mobs in Minecraft and they actually consider this as a full block. So even if the trapdoor is open, they will actually walk over it and eventually they will fall into the lava and they will die. I am definitely in creative mode so I will not die. Okay, so after the trap doors what you are going to need is a lot of light sources. Because you don't want this light, uh, the light level in the farm to drop below 11 because then piglins will start spawning and that will alter the rates of the farm. You would definitely not want that. Then you would need 12 bits of nylium. It could be any form of nylium. You just need to place your warped fungi on the on the nylium they can be placed on any one of the two types then you need 12 warp fungus you need 12 warps uh, i mean any kinds of slabs it, it is completely up to you then you need 48 fences now the fences are for the safety purposes because let's say there are hoglins in the farm and you are checking the drops underneath the hoglins might fall over the farm and they will come and attack you and that's what you don't want right <laughs> so yeah <laughs> you need some fences and these slabs, which you can see here, are also for the same purpose here. Alright, after you've got all of these materials, you should start building now. So let's, let's begin the build. 
So to begin with first we are going to actually build the kill chamber. So you need to be in the exact middle of your spawn uh, in of your you know that area in which you are building the farm and uh, then you should actually mark this place and I guess this is where the middle is. I mean okay that that is the middle <laughs> anyway. So we actually marked out the middle of this farm and this is where we are actually going to place our kill chamber. So what you need to do is by first you need to decide where your chest is going to be, where all of your drops are going to come through. So what you are going to do is you need to build up from the bedrock ceiling and go up one block and then you need to place your chest like this. You're going to have a double chest and then you can actually remove all of these blocks because that is not actually required. Now I have four hoppers running to the back of this chest so you can just place them in any sort of fashion you want. I'm just placing them like that. And that will be it for your hoppers. Now what you need to do is you need to build around these hoppers as in like creating a tube. So you need to place some temporary blocks like this. Then you can go around all the way. And make sure you're actually going only on three sides while you know above these above this chest. And then you can add one more layer on the top. And this time you can actually go all around and uh, like that. Now what you need to do is now this is where the glass actually comes into play. Now you can see that this is actually an open gap. This open space actually allows you to open the chest because what's the point in making a farm if you can't access the chest that actually all of the items drop into. Anyway, so this is actually where the baby hoglins can actually escape and they can and they will come and attack you so you don't want that again. So you need to place some blocks which actually prevent them from getting out but they also allow you open to open this chest. So I'm going to use glass but you could also use you know slabs or stairs. You need to place them upside down and they also work the same. I'm just going to use glass so you can see I can still open this chest. It is oh, it is fine. <laughs> now what you need to do is you need to go inside and now you can actually remove all of these temporary blocks on the corners as well because these are not required. And uh, now you need to go inside and what you need to do is you need to place four signs like this on the top of these hoppers like this. After that you can just drop your lava bucket on any one of the four corners and that is it. Your kill chamber is ready and this is where everything is going to drop. Now we need to build our platforms. Okay, to build your spawn platform you are going to go yet another layer above the lava. So you are going to place 8 more blocks like this. And this is where your hoglins are going to drop. So you need to place trapdoors here as it actually works over there. So you need to place two trapdoors like this on one side. And then you can place two on the other side. And this is how you know they are going to path find over this and they are going to fall through into the lava. Now from this you need to actually go out 6 blocks this central hole. So we actually already 1 block out so what you need to do is you need to go like only 5 blocks out from here. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 and you can see it's almost up to the edge of this farm. You don't need to go all the way to the edge right now. We are just only building the spawn platform and not the fence around it. So you need to do it on all the, on all the 4 sides like this. Also on this side and on this side. After this, you're going to actually make a square platform by connecting all of this and you need to fill in with all of the netherrack. So that's why you're going to need quite a lot of netherrack. So what you're going to do is you're going to connect everything like this and uh, make a square around it. After you've finished building the platform, the next step is to light it. You need to light it completely and thoroughly and I, I might not tell you how you should light this place up, you should light it. You can light it in any which way you want. If you want you can just completely go overboard and like completely fill this thing with lights. And you can also use any sort of light source, glowstone, torches, anything. I'm going to use shroom light because I think it looks cool. And I'm going to also fill it like in a systematic way. So it looks pretty nice. Now we need to add all of our, you know, nylium for our fungi. So we need to place, start by placing a few in the corners. So those are going to be our reference for, you know, adding more fungi in the middle. So what you're going to do is start by adding the nylium in the corners. So you need to go like one temporary block out like this and then place your nylium right off the corner. And uh, you need to do this for all of the four corners. So one here like this then another one here. Always move that temporary block as well. Then one here. Then for the you know the other nylium blocks in the middle of the rows what you need to do is let's talk only for one edge you need to come from this corner you need to add four of your building blocks like this then you need to add your crimson uh, I mean your nylium which is basically the block you're going to place your warped fungus on 
then you need to go four more blocks like this then place your nylium again and then add four more building blocks like this and it actually meets up with the second corner so this is actually a perfectly symmetrical distribution of all of these warped fungi so you need to do this for all the four edges after that your form should look something like this you can see all of the nylium blocks there now what you need to do is now you can actually place your warped fungi on all of these nylium blocks go all around the edges and place all of these warped fungi then in the middle of these warped fungi what you can also do is you can add a few fences because this is for your safety <laughs> as I've already told you earlier so you need to add all of these fences here and in the end on all of these what fungi you can cover this with slabs now this is actually for another reason and that is you can also avoid spawns on these corner blocks and that is also great so you can add all of these slabs on top of these warped fungi and that will be it with this you have actually completed your hoglin farm now how you are going to make it work is you are going to go afk really high up in the nether and it should be about like you know y200 or 230 or 240 depending upon the areas underneath the nether and uh, yeah <laughs> depending on the areas underneath the bedrock and uh, you need to go really high to be actually able to see hoglin spawning so you can see that there's two different farms right next to each other so you can see that we already see some pic uh, some hoglin spawning over there you can check your y coordinate i am at about 3230 right i cannot turn off my f3 and you can see that now both of our hoglin farms are producing hoglins and that is even better and uh, yeah <laughs> you can always do something like this or what you can also do is you can add more and more of these spawning platforms and you can definitely see the rates are extremely good as the number of hoglins is extremely large you look at these look at the rates you can just afk for about 15 minutes and you can easily get six stacks of food and that is like super duper easy anyway if you want to add any kind any other platforms you can add more platforms it's basically the same design as every other as the first platform you just need to make sure that there's at least a space of two blocks between the successive platforms and you can see how all of these hoglins are also falling into the lava you can see that they are actually walking over these trap doors and they are also getting mad while they are looking at the warped fungi that is what is happening and they are all rushing towards the center and they are all falling to their deaths oh this it just missed come on okay we can just leave it to them anyways guys this is the end of the tutorial i hope you enjoyed this and if you like this design be sure to leave a like down for this video and also subscribe to the plutonium place channel and also ring the notification bell so that you never miss any of my future videos and uh, i would also like to say that have i actually told you that i also have a twitter account and uh, you should definitely go and follow me on twitter you can always get updates for whenever videos come as well over there and uh, go follow on twitter <laughs> and in the end i will i'll say i'll see you in the next video bye